Okay, welcome once again to the Friday Beer Break brought to you by the Toronto Festival Beer, which is July 26th through to the 28th. We got a lot to drink today, thanks to Spearhead Brewing Company, and we're joined by Dimitri from Spearhead Brewing Company. Thank Dimitri, you. founder, right? Yes. I didn't know you were the founder. I thought you were just the brewmaster. Uh, no, no, I don't have that lofty title. No, <laughs> I'm just the guy who uh, comes up with the crazy recipes, and then the brewmaster makes it make sense. So how do, like, where did Spearhead come from? When did this start? Uh, about three years ago, uh, I was in London, England, and uh, I like to say I'm a refugee of the credit crisis. So <laughs> I came back home, had uh, uh, you know tried to get a new job, a new career, and was rethinking everything, and decided that uh, I may know a little bit about a lot of stuff, but I know a lot about beer. So how did that start? Uh, well, I just started writing a business plan uh, based on a, a loan agreement because I was a lawyer in my former life. <laughs> yeah. I just took the, the template and started working on that. I uh, talked to a few people about it. Um, my wife does all of our PR. She's a journalist by trade. Um, so I do all the legal stuff and uh, did a lot of research on it. And my sister does all the packaging. So we're a family company. Now I've had the Pale Ale before. I had it at Say What on Friday of last week. Pineapple? Yeah. Where'd that come from, man? Well, we'll start every... with that. That's what we'll start with because sure, we already yeah. talked about it. Okay. Um, I love West Coast uh, style beers. Uh, I love the big hoppiness and everything, but uh, Spearhead's all about beer without boundaries. So we try to shake it up every time we do uh, a beer. It has to be off the hook and slightly different from what's out there already. So if it's already out there, we're not going to do it. Um, and so pineapple, I just like the taste of how all that tropical fruit flavor when it's fermented goes with the citrus. Yeah, yeah. like the with the hops and the pineapple, it works really well. You wouldn't think that it would, but then you try it and you're like, that's amazing. Because I, when I had it the first time, I, I asked the waiter, I'm like, is there pineapple in there? He goes, there is. That's why it's Hawaiian. Like, it's very subtle though. I mean, a lot of people, when they think about like a, a fruit juice in a, in a beer, they're thinking big tart or like big sweet juiciness. And it's much more subtle than that. I mean, mm -hmm. you get it on the nose for sure. But you could almost be tricked into thinking that it was just the hops that was giving it that tropical yep. aroma. Um, and then, yeah, it's just it's nicely sweet on the, the palate, balances with the, the malt and the hop really well. So when you started, how many beers were you making? Was this the first one? No, we actually started with a different beer. Um, but this was one, uh, like the first homebrew I ever did was a completely different beer. But uh, this was uh, one day my buddy came over, and Ari, and we were brewing and I had some pineapple left over from breakfast. That was basically <laughs> all that happened. Uh, it wasn't really any kind of genius that went into it. Uh, but then our brewmaster, Tom. Um, we How come you're not drinking yours, by the way? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shame on me. Um, cheers. 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 Our brewmaster, Tom, is uh, born in the Czech Republic. He knows beer inside and out. He's 30 years in the business. And so what he did was he took this uh, kind of novel, unique concept, I guess, and he made it into uh, a world-class beer. Now, what was the first beer that you made? The first beer we came to market was this one. The first beer I ever made on my stove was an IPA, a very different one with uh, coriander and lime juice in it. All right, that sounds so, interesting. Still but what about this Moroccan brown, though? Yep. So, or did you want to go to the dump? No, case? let's let's do this and then we'll compare because we also have a, this is an unlabeled bottle, but this is the Big Kahuna, which is a double IPA. Now, can you buy the Big Kahuna or is no? It like... Only on draft. Wow. All right. So, so we're, only we're for a treat. Room. Will yeah. you have it at uh, at a at Toronto Festival of Beer? Uh, yeah, we'll have it at Toronto Festival of Beer, and we'll have it at Session, uh, which this is coming Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Session 99, yeah. What, what's the art for? Session. Session. At Witchwood Barnes. Saint Why do they call it? It's always Session 99. No, it was only Session 99 because it was at 99 Sudbury last year. The year before that, it was just called Session Well, he's always well. tweeting me with hashtag okay. Session 99. I don't know then. You'd have to ask uh, Okay, all right, all right, all right. Anyway. Who knows? Uh, so that'll be at Session. As yep. We'll, we'll have uh, one or two kegs of it. So if you want it, you got to get there early for it, I guess. For all real. right, good. Um, Moroccan style brown ale. Yeah, Moroccan um, was, again, Ari and I were, uh, were uh, home brewing and uh, we were just having some fun. So I said, you know, come up with, a, let's come up with a, either, you know, an ingredient or a country and then go from there. So he said figs immediately and I went, uh, okay, let's put raisins and dates and cinnamon with it and we'll call it Moroccan brown ale. And it literally happened within about 30 seconds and then we brewed the beer. Um, and we won the gold medal at the Toronto homebrew competition with it two years ago. And so it's been about two years of trials. Every one of our beers take about 20 to 30 trials before we get it right. And then it almost has like a, like, you know, that, uh, Great Lakes Brewery does the winter ale. Yeah. 
It's got like a bit of like the aftertaste is similar to that, but it's a lot more summery, and I feel so pompous saying something like that. <laughs> but it does. Am I making sense? No, here? yeah, I totally get that. Beerologist. I get a lot of the the jamminess from the fruits, which I really like. It's almost a little leathery, which is kind of cool. Which is not always necessary. Yeah, I was going to say, describe a beer. But no, no. In, in this case, thick hide, really. it's like a baseball club. <laughs> but you know, the good the, the thing about this is that it, you're not wrong. It's very similar to a wine. It's very vinous in character. Uh, so now I'm starting to sound pompous, right? Now. But it, you can definitely get wine characteristics in this beer. So you're, yeah. if you get like some plum in it or you know some toffee brown sugar notes, I get it, and I almost get a hit of uh, of chocolate. Yeah, which I'm guessing is off the malt. You know, we were okay a few weeks ago. We did the 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 hop series from uh, from Keith's, right? Yep. And you were saying how it's a great like foray into exotic beers. I mean, this is a great foray because it's got familiar tastes, but it's going off in its own completely different direction. It's fantastic. Well, and it's a cool beer as well if you've got um, the sort of person who's like, I don't like beer. I don't like beer. I don't yeah. like beer. If you're like, well, do you like what was he said? Raisins, figs. Dates. Yeah, dates. Like, do you like Fig Newtons? Yeah. yeah. Are you it's a fan kind of, of like a dried butter tree tart, fruit? Right? It is a bit like a butter tart beer. And you can give it to them anyway, and, and you know, maybe there will be some familiar tastes in there that people will get down to. So let me just knock back this, and then we'll do the big kahuna. I think the important thing that we're trying to show people is that beer doesn't have to be what you may think it is, right? It doesn't have to fit into a category. In fact, we don't like categories when it comes to beer. We just make the beer, and we try to, you know, call it something that people may be familiar with. But... Uh, it's more evocative of the taste of the beer rather than the style. Oh, look at that come out. Yeah, now we've got... Eager to breathe. Oh, look at this. Woo, I was, I, was, I was not gentle there. Kids at home, take note. Yeah, kids. All the kids that are watching the beer break right now. <laughs> hey, it's okay. Beer <laughs> masters, uh, us brewers, we like a lot of head on our, <laughs> on our beer. <laughs> we've got these uh, quality Q107 mugs. I have Ryan Parker. Ryan Parker, hashtag strong. I highly recommend. And you should drink an imperial beer in a coffee mug. Out of yeah. a mug. Ideally, China with. Fine bone China. With branding, if possible. But we can see, I mean, so this is unfiltered, obviously. Nice yeah. and uh, nice and opaque. Great color, like honey orange. Uh, you got that up perfectly into the glass, though. I'm very impressed. I know. You should take, we should take a photo of that. Let's take a smell. So this is about 10.5% alcohol. It's 100 IBUs, which means. For people who don't know what IBUs means, it's it's the uh, you know the way you describe bitterness technically in a beer. Yeah. So it's extremely extremely bitter, but I think with the alcohol and the malt backbone, it's pretty balanced, uh, and it's dry hopped with Nelson Sovan hops from New Zealand, which gives it it's just like the taste of the tropics. Yeah, it uh, the, it really has a sweet taste. I'm not sure if that's the alcohol though. I think it's the maltiness. Um, what Dimitri was saying, you gotta with this level of bitterness, you have to have a high alcohol, high malt. I to need keep more beer in check. there. God, you really frothed me over there, pal. Well, I was. I thought you needed a shave because you got that beard going on. You get <laughs> Isn't it amazing? It's luscious. But uh, Nelson Sovin is a very distinctive hop, and you get a ton of it. It's named actually, and, and you'll hear the word Sovin in it, um, after the Sauvignon Blanc grapes that are grown in New Zealand. It has sort of a vinousy fruitiness to it. That uh, I mean, you can smell it, you can taste it. It's great. And is there pineapple in this as well? Yeah. So yeah, it's, pineapple it's like a grown-up uh, Hawaiian style. Yeah. It's the big with a different hop. Yeah. yeah. It's phenomenal. This what is makes really you nice. go with the with the double IPA? Like when you you've got the IPAs and you've got the other beers going, why the double? I think there's a complexity that you get imperial beers or double you know double IPAs or imperial brown ales or imperial stouts. There's a complexity that you get it with all the malt and the because now you've got higher alcohol content. But the aim is not necessarily always to get the higher alcohol content; is to get more flavor and complexity in the beer. So what you're going for are beers that are really like wines and like and the higher alcohol beers. You can even get you know 18, 20, 26 percent alcohol beers. There are some famous examples in like the Utopias that really are more like an aperitif. It's more like a, that's like, like syrup, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, like syrup. Yeah. it's actually syrupy. Yeah. You had it, right? I had it. I had yeah, some. Yeah. It was so. pretty, pretty amazing. But this is awesome. I, I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've had this, and it's it's very good. I was Thanks. saying we did... I couldn't drink a lot of this. You have no. to eat when you're drinking yeah. this. And it would be great with a nice spicy meal. It would be yeah. great if you had like a pork chop with like a nice spicy sort of peppery sauce mm -hmm. on it. Spicy spice. <laughs> Bit of spice. But <laughs> this I, is going to be great with Indian food, too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's always my go-to is like a nice hot curry like or a butter chicken or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, this is awesome. Really well balanced. Thank you. It doesn't show... We. It's even a little warmer than we'd intended, but it's not showing a lot of heat from the booze which is great so yeah i'm 
I'll be drinking more of this at session, I'll tell you that. Thanks. I'll be coming by the booth and Oh we've got our that. Jamaican fire at session too. That's uh you did that that's your collaboration? Yeah, yeah we did that with Scott Rondo, um, from the Premier Beer Experience. And what we did with that is we it's a it's a dark ale brewed with uh, Scotch bonnet peppers, coffee and mango. So <sighs> All the right. taste of the island. <laughs> so should be good. As opposed to a raspberry saison. As opposed to a raspberry saison. Sassy, sassy Ellison Brie. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, see, this is awesome. Thanks for coming, man. Thank you. We're, Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thank you very much, boss. You. Cheers. Yeah, so session this weekend and then Toronto Festival of Beer, July 26th, 28th. And Allison Breer and other stuff. <laughs>